the second register, notes that are above the octave note. There's the typical top note that we play when we're playing, and we can go above that. This instrument is capable of a few notes in the second register. What is the second register? We are getting the flute to behave differently. We are getting the flute to resonate instead of at full length, at half length. It's actually resonating in two halves, and if you want to find out about how this works, check out the How Flutes Work flute cast. Separate flute cast, long flute cast, it shows you the, uh, the structure of the inside of the flute when it is vibrating air to create sound. What we're going to focus here is getting a few notes in this second register. How do we do it? Well, the first thing um, I'd like you to try, if you've got a flute handy, this is an E minor flute, okay? And uh, the first thing I'd like you to try is run up the scale and try this note. We're going to add this note at the top end of the scale. So it's a regular pentatonic minor scale. Here we go. All holes closed except the top note. That's in the second register. If you can't get it to sound, you might try closing the top hole partially and cracking it or shading it. It might go like this. Notice I'm cracking the top hole very slightly. That's another way to get it. To get the flute to sound a note, that's about a half step above the octave note. That's a second register note. Notice the difference in tonality. It's more strident. It's also a high tension note because it's a half step above the octave. So both tone and a dissonant interval go to make a really high tension note. That difference, the strident and the high tension is really powerful. You can use that when you're playing mostly consonant in minor pentatonic. Throw that note in occasionally, and you can change up your melody. Um, you're getting the note in the second register. That note that we just showed you, that minor ninth, all holes closed, top hole open, okay? That works on almost all flutes. Above that, it's the Wild West. You have to explore. And the general guideline is you can get more notes in the second register if you've got a long, skinny flute. If you've got a flute that's relatively flat, uh, fat for its length, relatively stubby, then it's probably going to get less notes in the second register. This flute is relatively long and skinny, and so I can get quite a few notes. I'm going to just keep on picking up my fingers in the second register, and I'm actually going to go to shading the top hole, because that's what works on this flute. Here we go. I've got quite a few notes up in the second register that I can work with. Notice I'm not breathing any harder to get it. Um, on other instruments, uh, you know, side-blown flutes, sometimes a little bit more focus on your embouchure or a little bit more breath pressure will help get a, a higher register note. That's not what we're doing here. We're using the same breath pressure. We don't want to get louder when we get up there. It's already a wow note. It's a very high note to begin with, so let's not make it too loud, and just use the same pre uh, breath pressure and transition smoothly. So I'll play a melody that includes some of those higher notes. incorporating them naturally into your melody. Now, what happens if the note up there is kind of strident, okay? 
This uh, is producing a pretty good tone in the second register notes, but sometimes they're mm, a little difficult to deal with. What um, They can still be valuable. You can still use, use those finger positions. You can still use those as ornaments. And it goes something like this. If you want an ornament into the octave note, I'm going to go into the octave note from above. That works great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just putting on the four middle fingers. I'm leaving the bottom and the top open. That's a note. But instead of using it as a melodic pitch, I'm going to use it as an ornament. So I might begin my octave note with this. I just had four fingers on, bottom and top uh, open. And I'm using it as a very brief grace note. Different effects versus that's one way to do it. Let's switch flutes and go to a, it's longer, but it's much stubbier. It's actually got quite a larger board. Same flute maker. Let's see what we get in the second register. You get that minor ninth. And now it falls off a cliff. This fingering, which worked on the other flute, really doesn't cut the mustard here. Hesitate to use that in any kind of a playing situation, right? Now, on this flute, very valuable. If you notice this fingering here, I'm cracking the top hole, so I'm getting a second register note. Just about close to an octave above this, this note. Nice. It's, it's very valuable to have an entire chromatic scale all the way up to the octave note above this note, above this bottom hole open note. On this flute, it doesn't have the same pitch, it doesn't have that same pitch relationship. It's not a true octave from this note. So, the idea is as the flute gets shorter and stubbier, you're, you're probably not going to get uh, as many notes in the second register. Uh, or uh, they're not going to be in tune with your first register octave, uh, and they're not going to be as valuable. So the lesson is every flute is different, every flute has personality. Explore your second register and use it especially in the ornamentations. And you can almost always use this note. Have fun with the second register.